morning. <laughs> so, well, not morning for me, but... No, not morning for you. Sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. All right, let's start. Um, welcome to the stand-up for the 9th of November for Open Research Institute. And we'll talk about what we did over the past week and a little bit more expanded about uh, what's coming up over the next week or weeks. Because um, the goal for today is to try to get a more refined task list for end to end. So everything that we can break down uh, today, um, and it can still be pretty high level. I'm just trying to, to make sure that we document everything for, for tasks just to make sure we're not missing anything. And then if there's any resources that are needed or any roadblocks uh, that remain. Um, and so go, go ahead, Andre, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, so uh, last week I was um, basically studying the uh, libgse GSE, and I think Thomas pointed out uh, to get uh, examples of frames and things like that so I can uh, uh, compare with the, the GSE encoding stuff. Uh, didn't make much progress, like I, I had to reinstall some stuff, but never mind. <laughs> Um, there is, yeah, and yeah, basically did that really. Yeah, understand. <laughs> Installing yeah. and reinstalling, it turns out to be a, a larger part of the job for all of us than we may think. Yeah, all right. it, yeah. <laughs> All right, what do you see in terms of uh, task breakdown for the next uh, number of weeks? Yeah, so once so the, if the once the GSC encoding is done, then we can potentially feed uh, like variable length frames at the input. Uh, I don't know how to connect that, uh, like make use of that. As in, we could in theory, if, I don't know, feed Ethernet frames, or I don't know if there if additional. Um, Processing is needed, yeah, but sort sort of the front end is is more or less ready. And I, I think the key thing is actually the the RF parts, the the analog devices board. Yeah, we, I think I I don't have much experience with that part, and I think it's very. I, like I can help, but it's very like lab dependent or. Yeah. yeah. Understood. All right, I've got it written down. All right, anything, any other um, high level tasks that you see? Or any other way to break it down? Uh, I Yeah, just a, sort of the front end. Like how uh, there's millions of ways to feed data. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Are we using a vi you know, opening a video and encoding, or opening like frames, like a list of uh, like PCAP files, for example, where you have the frames already? You know, I don't know. Okay, no, those are some good questions. Yeah, if we define that, then we can obviously sort of to work towards that. Okay. Got it. All right, any resources that you need or any things that are in your way? Uh, no, no, not really. All right. How about you, Anshul? Hey. Uh, so yes, uh, I'm getting that Beta Linux to build and uh, to deploy on the PS part. Uh, the aim here, uh, it's a it's a module that has been built by Thomas uh, that connects uh, that that connects the analog part. So uh, it has that JESD links. So once that's done. Uh, it's basically PS to JEST uh, connection in that module. And once that's done, so as Soto mentioned that 
analog part will be verified. Uh, and then I will put in the DBBS2 part in front of it. So we will have DBBS2 and JESD link. And, uh, and then uh, there is some overlap here. Uh, I know my GSC module is not complete, but I have a GSC module and a BB frame form, uh, BB frame uh, module that forms a BB frames. And then I need to plug that. And then again, the video frames will be forwarded from uh, uh, through YouTube or whatever it is to BB frame to GSC frame to DVBS to encoder and then to uh, via JESD to analog devices. So uh, that's the plan and that's where I'm working right now. Got it. Uh, no, my main aim is to get the uh, Beta Linux compiles. Uh, now I want to uh, upload it via boot via JTAG. Uh, that's the next step. And once that this project is verified, then we'll plug in different holes here. Cool. Okay. I think I got everything and I'll, uh, yeah, that makes sense. That helps a lot. It makes it look a lot more clear. Yeah. Do you need anything? Are there any roadblocks in your way? Uh, no roadblock, just that the system and the VMs uh, should be stable enough. That will be really helpful. And uh, ZC706, uh, that's there. And I will need access to that. Okay. I can double check if you need it to work with um, JTAG upload and it's not, I, I would need to check and make sure the switches are set correctly. Um, I don't know I what they're Suoto set to did, right now. Suoto did manage to uh, do it via JTAG. So I think the switches are there. Okay. They are set up correctly. Yeah, just if something weird happens, let, let me know. Cause I, it could have been set to SD card. But some of the stuff is gonna, ah. works multi-mode, like some, like mm -hmm. I, I know that setting it to JTAG also lets us do the um, the straight from from Petalinux uh, version. Mm -hmm. um, the the is sort of a uh, FTP style, uh, and I think yeah. that the switches are the same for for a straight JTAG. So that I think that's what we'll migrate towards, um, just so we don't have to monitor the switches as mm -hmm. often. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other comments or? or questions or advice? Yeah, uh, only thing, uh, and there, uh, I, am, uh, I see some duplicative effort there. So I am working on GSC encoder also uh, and BB frame format. Up. So uh, if, if you, if you there, there, is, there, is no, uh, yeah, there is no duplicacy, if you can improve it, you can develop their own module. But yeah, just to let you know that I'm also working on the similar thing. Yeah, duplication is not necessarily yeah. bad at bad. all. Yeah. It's yeah. not bad. and. You know, there's uh, hmm. there's great great power in two people taking a crack at the same thing. You know, yeah. that's that's totally okay, and we'll be able yes. to share back and forth. And uh, you know, and if there's anything that can be improved or reused, then then great. And more people, we learn hmm. best by doing. So it's it's a uh, that's totally all right. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. All right, Paul. Hello. Um, the whole episode with. Uh, upgrading the uh, the array on the remote labs computer chunk is completed. I hope it seems to be stable, uh, bigger and better than before. We have dual parity disks, so protected against multiple drive failures, and uh, dual data disks, so we have more capacity. Uh, I don't anticipate any further <clears throat> work on that in the near future, so the system should be stable. Uh, there is a a drive or two that came out of the system that may be rescuable, but that can be deferred until it's a convenient time. And some work done on others, another host system instead of on Sean directly. I don't have anything you know, coming up in the next week or so. All right, thank you so much for, for all the work. Very appreciated. Paul, one query. Uh, yes. And to Michelle also, uh, are we planning on at least one level of data backing we do have one level of you do. data okay. backup, but it's not up to the instant. It's uh, periodical. And it's also, you know, there's a possibility for corruption to creep in between backups. Any backup mm -hmm. is imperfect. Uh, you shouldn't rely on any one system. Uh, if my house burns mm -hmm. down, the system's gone. <laughs> 
Okay. Got you. Okay. Yeah, in general, good advice. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's do all we can to make sure it doesn't burn down. Yeah. I, I have a question. So for, for the demo, it, like so the analog devices that there's a reference design you can insert i think a sine wave or something that is very known and you know you can uh, i don't know plug to an, an antenna and well a pair of antennas and then to a, an analyzer or something right uh, uh, how do we check like we only have the TX side, right? Like, how how do we make uh, how do we check that the the thing is actually doing what it's supposed to do? Like, do we have a a, a commercial or a reference receiver or something? Well, we do. We do have some commercial um, modulators and demodulators for DVB S two and for S two X. So that would be one way to do it. Uh, another way would be. Um, and also, they, they, the idea was to get them to be GSE, to have GSE. So I'll go back and make absolutely sure that we've got everything set up uh, for commercial mm -hmm. reference gear. Um, but we also have the, um, what is it, the SR1 Pro. Um, and we also have someone working really hard on GNU Radio receive blocks for DVB-S2. Um, and if there's anything else, maybe Paul can remind me of what we have in the lab. We do have uh, some commercial boards that we haven't mm -hmm. made much use of. Oh, the small PCI boards? Yeah. That's right. Okay, so there's another another possibility there. Okay. So we do have some some checks. Um, the, and the, I think the, the safest way would be to have a, a known good, uh, compliant, like a commercial gear, which is why we bought the Proflix stuff and why we have the, the tuner cards. Um, the PCIe tuner, oh, yeah. so that we have something that is we're reasonably sure is correct, like it's compliant. It's it's a commercial or lab uh, gear, so we do have that, and that's that's what we will be striving to um, to be re to be received by in order to provide sort of a, and then we ratchet our way up to where we're we're using mm -hmm. all open source stuff that we designed ourselves, with you know constantly checking to make sure that it's compliant. Yeah. And um, so there's several like layers, as in uh, the receiver is obviously the backwards from the transmitter. So first thing would be like the symbols, and the f like. I don't. I don't. I have no idea how am I. You know, I, I can plug some test equipment, okay, and I can see numbers, or I think I can see numbers, right? Like, <laughs> how do I check if the thing is, you know? Um, there's the whole constellation thing, which is I, um, I saw some graphs like the constellation graph, and they can get very fuzzy. As in, you know, there's points that don't might be 45 degrees, might be you know <laughs> 20 or I don't know, zero something. It, does anyone have a, a, a expert? Oh, you know how a tutorial on how to debug this? stuff you mean in gen like in general how to how to do the receive chain uh, yeah like how um, we're gonna need to tap probably it's not gonna work first time right so it's like the divide and conquer so the Correct. receiving yes. and this nothing and then okay i'm gonna s pick something in the middle and see you know is Constellation, okay, is right. modulate. I, I don't. Yes, like, no, you're you're filtering. on. You're absolutely on the right track, and that is how we, we do it. You divide and conquer a uh, receive chain. So the first step is to yeah. get the symbol timing, really, and then focusing on that first, and then it ratchets down through all the way down to the bits. Um, so it sounds like it'd be a good time to um, to go get that paper. There's a particular paper that, that I've found super useful for DVB-S2 uh, receive because it explains the DVB-S2 kind of specific mm -hmm. approach to, a to to doing a receiver. Um, and I'll go get that because it's it's an excellent walkthrough of, of how to how to receive the yeah. signal. 
and I think I have it printed to be honest. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. <laughs> I have a stack of things printed too. But that's a really, really good and readable yeah. tutorial. It's not um not, it's not chock full of equations. The language is nice and you know it's it's it, none of this stuff is simple because receivers are not simple. The transmitter is often considered to be much easier to design than the receiver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but so in terms of understanding, that paper is an excellent place to start, and that's the the general approach that we're going to have with things that we write. In terms of like being able to verify a set signal in the lab, we have equipment that can do it, and if we see a signal and we see data coming out, um, then we're good. So you know, it's verified over the air versus verified um, through mm -hmm. design and through understanding. Those are two parallel things that we, we all should, you know, if, if we're called to do it, then we, we do it. You know, if you're, if you're interested in digging in and learning how the receiver works, then starting with that particular paper and going through mm -hmm. all of that is the way to do it. And if you're just interested in seeing if your transmitted design uh, is verified, then we're gonna do that too with um, right. commercial and lab gear in the lab. And the goal there is to, if you can set it up and configure it correctly, and if the signal transmitted is the right signal, then we should see uh, stuff come out. And then of course it won't the first time, like you said, uh, and then we dig in and figure out what, what's flipped, what's missing, what's yeah. not quite completely, you know, all of those things. And is there, um... So like the 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 um, antenna, like the over the air part is, uh, I think is inserts a lot. Well, it will insert noise, of course. Uh, is there a way to bypass? Like I don't know. Suppose you plug something from one board. Yes, yes, that like, is that is exactly how it's done. It's a, a radiated versus a conducted test. So you when you do a a test where you bolt up yeah. um, one transmitter through some usually an attenuator or something like that to to a receiver and you do it over a coax cable that's okay that's that is done a lot you know in order to um you know to cut usually in order to like make absolutely sure the signal is delivered with the right amount of power to a receiver uh, when you do it over the air then we use a number of, of really neat small antennas in the lab uh, and separate it over the mm -hmm. air um and, but in both cases, if the receiver and the transmitter are independent, then you still have to synchronize. And the synchronization yeah. and the, the, the finding the edges of things, that's really a, a, a big part of the receiver yeah. design. That's kind of where it all goes apart. Um, that's where it can all fall apart. That's where a lot of attention and care has to be taken because that's pretty much the first place that screws up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you... you yeah, we, I, I would only go uh, for antennas once the thing, you know, with, like you said, uh, conducted works perfectly. Um, yeah. Like, it, there's no point in if you're still getting errors. Yeah. Like, every often, like, you you, you yeah. might want, might see something, but you you know deep down it's something <laughs> wrong. wrong but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, as a as a um, a completely unrepentant optimist, sometimes it's easy to <laughs> yeah. ignore the things that turn out to be a red flag later. Uh, well, yeah, you're exactly I mean, for right. For a demo, like for a demo, if you have like some error rate and you can, I don't know, show that I don't know, eighty percent, seventy percent is done. Yeah, um, still, I think um, pretty cool. But I will, yeah, I, I, yeah. I've let the you know you guys that are more familiar with this part judge. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We can we can add stuff yeah. to it like noise. Like for instance, when Paul uh, shows the demo of the beacon, mm -hmm. um, something that that p makes people really happy to see is actually like standing in between the transmitter and yeah. receiver, or putting a hand in between it, and you can see that the signal goes away that proves a couple of things to a skeptical audience. It proves that it's not leaking, that we didn't rig it up to where there's a coax under the table, you know, that it really is going over the air and everything is working. Uh, and it also shows like the, the constellation getting fuzzier and fuzzier and then becoming yeah. not there. And then when you remove your hand, then it reacquires. So those sorts of things can be, can be done in a demo over the air and are very exciting. And you know, yeah. it, it makes it it makes it a little more relevant uh, and real. 
So that's that's what those are the sorts of things that we will definitely do, along with like adding noise or adding a narrowband interferer and showing that we can actually tolerate some narrowband interference. Those sorts of things are stuff that we do okay, live. Cool. Cool, this cool. will also be cool, yeah. If, if we add some noise, we can see error correcting codes in action. Yes. They are correcting the message. It will be awesome. Yes, it is, it is really neat. It's yeah. kind of, it's hard to do <laughs> digital communications demos really because, um, you know, especially when it just works, it can be a little bit boring. So we're going to try very hard to make it as interesting as yeah. it possibly can be, you know. <laughs> There's plenty, and then the yeah, the adaptive coding and modulation is really cool. So with the right visualizations, that is going to be mm. something that is not normally done, especially in mm -hmm. amateur radio. So we'll uh, we'll get to show that working. Oh, it's going to be really neat. On a real system, um, so I was reading on the GSC, uh, like you can change the modulation. But there's some parameters that can change. I don't think all can change. But it, it seems there is sort of a hypervisor or a supervisor looking up and saying, I don't know, I need to change um, code rate to X because mm -hmm. reasons. Yes. Um, who, what, you know, where, where does, it's not a, it's not a person, right, doing this. <laughs> Yeah, not for, yeah, there's three, there's three different ways in the protocol that we're using. So there's three different ways in DBBS2 to, to, um, to set the, the error, the error coding and the, and the modulation. And the first one is just the easiest. It's constant. You just set it once, you yeah. figure out your, your link budget, like maybe you are a, a microwave link over a lake and you know that in the wintertime that you got great, maybe you have great SNR and then the the summertime all the foliage and all the humidity makes it terrible so you pick the worst case and then you pick the modulation encoding for the worst case you set it once and yeah you're giving up some margin it, when it when the channel is better but hey it's cheap and easy and the coding is simple right the next one is variable coding mm -hmm. and modulation that means usually somebody is setting it there's a human involved that checks like say a satellite and goes oh look we have more margin today turn it up you know, or oh, okay, it's a literal. Okay, it's not a system like per frame. Okay, okay, that makes yeah, sense. It, it is per yeah, frame, and it can be per frame. Yeah, it can be for for variable yeah. coding. It, I mean, a person is going to have to be really quick to do it per frame. Yeah. But you can see that you know, variable coding means that some there's some sort of control, some somebody's twiddling the knobs, or maybe even a computer program is twiddling the knobs. But the, what we're doing is the next level, the highest one, and that's adaptive coding and modulation, and it's mm, a cl yeah. closed loop. You can change per frame oh, okay. your coding and mm. modulation, and it's done by paying attention to the signal to noise ratio. So yeah. that means you have to have some more sensing. You have to be able to handle um, the decision making, and it's a state. Oftentimes, it's a state uh, state machine in code. Um, so that's that's how it's most often um, implemented, uh, or it can be some other sort of customized control loop. But it's closed loop, and it's looking almost always looking at signal to noise ratio, and um, okay. you know. So that means that that it's a little more complicated to acquire and to become part of the system. Um, and it, it does mean that your, your system has to be a little more agile, like per frame decisions yeah. on coding and modulation mean, mean more, you need more horsepower, uh, in your, in your circuits and, and design, uh, but that's what we're going for. That's, uh, that's the baseline design for us. Yeah. That's yeah. A, okay. I'm just, sorry, go on. Sorry. That's a really interesting research area that we haven't gotten too far into yet. Um, because we're an amateur radio communication system, we can't always rely on the closed loop feedback from the receiver because that one receiver is not the only person trying to receive a signal. Uh, well, the spacecraft, probably software, will have to uh, implement some kind of heuristic uh, which will mm -hmm. use as much coding and modulation as possible so that as many people as possible can receive as many of the signals as possible using whatever criteria we, we determine is, is desirable. For instance, for very low bandwidth stuff like short messaging or even voice, you might want to just overpower the heck out of it. You use lots of extra coding so that people listening with smaller receivers will be able to receive it, whereas you may not be able to do that with the higher bandwidth communications. Uh, this one of several ways in which this is a different kind of system than a commercial system. Yeah. 
because then that he's Paul's just raised a whole other area of um, of internet networking, <laughs> which is quality of service. So when you have you're looking at the different types of traffic, and you can make decisions that affect the the, the coding and modulation. Uh, so there's plenty to do here as soon as we get an end to end system up and running is uh, starting to dig into this, which this whole other really fun areas yeah. to work in. And can there be multiple, um, like Paul was saying, can I send a frame with a lot of overhead uh, in, in terms of error correction stuff? And then another that is, I don't know, this, uh, targeted at less people, for example. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. But, and and but, it's 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 time division multiplex, like you don't have different carriers or something. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the baseline is that it's a time division multiplex and it's a single big channel down. Um, if we find that that we can expand out to multi carrier down link, then then fine, but like uh, we won't yeah. we won't be we won't be pushing that until I think much later. But yes, it's a TDM downlink. So okay. each one can be different and they can be targeted to a different subset of the people that are potentially listening. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm just asking because so the the bulk, I, th well, I think, yeah, the entirety of the transmitter, like you can't change by frame. It, I was thinking how these, uh, if, I'm send, if I'm putting ethernet frames into the system, how do I map? Because obviously Ethernet frames don't carry um, a mod code or anything. Right. Yeah, so something has to decide. So mm -hmm. um, it's ob for the demo, like we, we're not going to put the adaptive in the closed loop thingy. Yeah, uh, it's just that yeah, if I can yeah. think of the, a way to, you know, okay, I need to solve this so I don't sort of you know, block myself in the future. Um, yeah, I don't just, think you're you're not you're not. It doesn't sound like you're in any danger of of doing mm -hmm. that. And then you, the, the Ethernet frames are just the payload. Like that's just what goes yeah. on to the the train cars that you know roll down the track towards the ground. So so don't don't worry. You're not um, you're definitely not messing anything up uh, in the in terms in terms of like um, should we try to do adaptive coding and modulation for this for the end to end system no mm -hmm. we should try to get as a, a good yeah. enough design as yeah. quickly as possible hopefully i'm really hoping we can show this off in february at hamcation in person at the at that show i you know um i think working backwards from from february to see if we can pull it off uh great that would that would be fantastic you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> so yeah so anyway, that's the, so don't worry. The Ethernet frames are just a payload, and then the okay, decision cool. about like you know they, 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 they're just a payload, but like what are they? Are they you know what type of data they are? I'm sure that that that's something that we can um, that we can handle. So in terms of like, is there a quality of service issue where like voice needs to be delivered as quickly as possible? It needs to be low latency. Don't spend any time trying to correct it too much because our ear our mm -hmm. ear ball, you know ears can actually handle uh dropouts and delays and things like that for data file like if you're sending a, a file to somebody you really don't want any, you know you could spend some time making that making sure that that's more correct so the quality of service issues and decisions are, are really pretty cool and that means multiple queues for loading up various frames yeah and this is all covered in the uh implementation guide so or at least introduced where they give you at least uh here's a here's one reference design for uh, queues for quality of service for different types of traffic for I think it might be in the GSE uh, implementation yeah. guidelines so so and then there's lots of IEEE papers where people take different takes on it and have experimented with it so there's a lot of good stuff yeah. available to us and and we can contribute something that's amateur specific you know since our needs and and our freedoms uh, for what we can do are, are different than the commercial space so it uh, it does it, it does mean that we have to do some things that are extra uh, that are not as simple or easy, but we get we do get a lot of uh, le freedom and leeway to explore and experiment yeah. that the commercial people simply never get to do. So I yeah. can see it's not complicated to add uh, like multiple queues. Uh, I, uh, the key thing that I, it's, it's the hard part is 
uh, how do I, you know, schedule multiple? Like, who am who am I sending next? Um, and I'm not trying to answer that question now. Like, I know it's a hard question. Uh, but I mean, is if there is, I don't know, people working on this, then we might, I don't know, just talk or, you know, see if there's some overlap, some, uh, maybe it's something that we can test. Um, or we can help, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, the, yes, I think the answer is yes, and, and don't worry. Okay, cool, cool, thank you. Yeah, Paul, did you have any, it sounded like you had a comment. Well, depending on what the shape of the demo is, you, you may want to accommodate some metadata if you're along with each packet, um, maybe a special wrapper format or something. Um, if the ethernet source is uh, simulating the, the multiple queues multiplexer part, um, I don't, it's not guaranteed that, that the right shape of the demo would be for the Ethernet to be payload only with no, uh, ah, okay, no HDM point. data associated with it. But until we're able to solve the, uh, the whole scheduling thing, which is not a hardware problem, I don't think. Maybe it is, but um, I assume that that would be mostly managed in software. Um, we just want to be maintain a flexible architecture that can handle yeah. multiple queues yeah. and possibly some metadata traveling along with packets. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the algorithm is the hard part. Uh, but like implementation wise, you just put queues and you put something that will, you know, di uh, direct a frame to a queue and then, you know, you decide when to read one or the other or something like that. Yes. Just, yeah. Yeah. If this sort of thing is notoriously hard to demo. You might not be able to tell whether your, uh, your quality of service algorithms are working until you have load on the system. And uh, yeah, you're right. May not, sure. That might not be this demo. <laughs> that might be some future demo. <laughs> well, let's see what we can do. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think it's hopefully we'll get there. Absolutely. <laughs> we will. Yeah. Hopefully, it won't be in space by that time. But, you know, <laughs> but even if it is, that, that would be great experimentation to do in space. Yeah, testing and production the hard way. Cool. <laughs> All right. Any any last comments or questions before we close? Uh, no, not for me. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and looking forward to uh, looking forward to this and many other things. And I'll see you on Slack and on the list. Mm -hmm.